Hello, thank you for joining me. Thank you for helping me to stay focused. Despite having some tremendous rain in the past two days, I get to play with my orchids today because at least during the day it hasn't rained, which is amazing, helps a lot. Now we're looking at the table of the Rapiculus Lelias and normally in their wild habitat where they live, they get a lot of rain during the fall, the winter, and then at some point into spring. However, they also get very, very dry dry spells. Now, my forecast is predicting a lot of rain, on and off, granted, but not enough wind. So these Rapiculus Lelias out in nature may get inundated with water supply, but they also get a lot of airflow. As you can see, it's a wind still day. Beautiful day. I'm not cold. That makes it even more beautiful. But because during this time of year, the season as well, Rapiculus lalias start with new growth, seeing as they're getting watered, not all of them are in that rhythm, in that cycle. Some start their new growth in spring. But the ones that start their new growth, there's very tight little spaces in between the structures. And without airflow, mine won't dry out. And for that reason, I have to take them into the blooming alley. At least they'll still be outside, which is awesome. <laughs> Real estate indoors is a little bit limited, <laughs> but outside they'll be absolutely fine and still get to enjoy all the humidity in the air, but not get inundated and at least get a chance for the new growth to dry out, even if the media doesn't dry out because they're all in semi-hydro pots. You can see that I've removed the sleeves of all the little white pots. That is because I want to make sure that the reservoir, should it fill up, that it drains out. Still, they're not going to dry out as much as I would like them to by leaving them outside with temperatures as they are right now. Maximum is 15 degrees Celsius even though I will be draining all the reservoirs. But I need to do that because again, out in nature, they may get inundated with water. They may stay wetter for longer, but they would dry out in between the bursts, the showers. And then of course, sometimes they get a little bit of water from the snow melting. Thankfully, I don't have to worry about snow melting because then I would have to be much more selective about who gets to stay outside and who doesn't. So across the board, I can go down to five degrees Celsius, making it very feasible for all of them to stay outside. However, I think it is best just to be on the safe side to put them under the covered portico. And besides, the gardener has as yet to come and clean and trim the hedge, preparing it for the winter sleepy time for this hedge. If I get this job done today while it is not pouring with rain, I can kill two birds with one stone, meaning I can protect the rapiculus lalias, and then I can just be ready to remove the shelves when the gardener comes and we are good to go for his cleanup. Right, that's about it. Oh, and yes, and my Victoria Regina is just looking stunning. Doing a little bit of a photobomb, top right hand of the screen. I took some pictures just because of the richness of the purple. Just gorgeous. Right now, that orchid is living la vida. It's perfect for it. Great temperatures, lots and lots of water. And Stan, the man, is just like drinking it up, getting a proper, proper nature's flush. Couldn't be happier at this point in time. So I shall be draining the pots and rearranging my Rapiculus Lelias. And once I've done that, we can have a look-see as to what I did, why I did it, and how they are positioned. Let's have at it. There we go. <laughs> Empty tables. Oh, I feel a lot better. I'm glad I got this done. Nothing is worse than thinking I should, I should, I should. And then at the end of the day, having to suffer the consequences of not having done anything and go with, 
I wish I had, I wish I had, I should have, <laughs> you know, and all that. So they're okay, and I'm okay when the gardener comes. Moving Stan the Man is a doddle, and at least the tables are empty if I am ambushed, and he comes while I'm not in the house. <laughs> have at it, dear gardener, have at it. Anywho, they are in their safe place. So, even if it gets a bit more windy, which is fine, if it doesn't get warmer for them, that's fine. At least now their reservoirs have been drained. I had to release some moss from the drainage holes because, you know, haha, <laughs> if you don't do that and you think everything is hunky-dory, it's a good thing to check whether you can drain the reservoir, otherwise they are going to be sitting in a swimming pool of water, which some of them absolutely appreciate, but not all of them. So, in order not to have to distinguish who likes to have their roots inundated in a swimming pool of water and who doesn't, draining everything was the best course of action of course it makes sense to put the tall ones on top and then stagger everybody around at eye level and where they fit nicely and look beautifully presented but there's one thing that needs to be said about moving orchids around especially rapiculous lelias i do do light training but with rapiculous lelias they train themselves so with other orchids that have a new growth coming, then I have the growth point furthest from the light so that the growth actually grows upright and hopefully back into the pot where I would want it to be instead of sticking out perpendicular out of the edge of the pot. Now, rapiculous lanias are a little different. You have to always be mindful that no matter your perception of the direction of light, you have to look at the growths and see how they are developing because to protect themselves in such harsh conditions as where they grow locally in their habitat, they will grow their new growth with the back of the leaf facing the harshest light source. So if you're dealing with rapiculous lelias, like in my case, not on artificial lights or anything, but depending on the climate, make sure if you have to move them that you always respect a new growth. The back of the leaf has to face the main source of light because that is how they protect themselves. Otherwise, you're going to be wasting energy for the plant having to reorientate itself. If it cannot reorientate itself because the growth is already too mature, then it could cause some serious issues and burning of the front of the leaves. I've been there, I'm telling you, I've made that mistake. Just trying to give a little bit of a heads up so that you don't have the same mistake as well. The cuticles of rapiculous lelias on the back of their leaves are tough as nails. The front not so much because automatically they would be facing a less harsh condition. So keep that in mind and that's how I've positioned them. I also gave them a good once over with the eyes to make sure that no scale are trying to manifest themselves. We're still good to go. They are scale free and that's been four weeks now. And probably for Christmas they get a good little eau de garlic alcohol. <laughs> a little tipple for Christmas just to make sure the scale doesn't have a chance to manifest itself. The concept of my blooming alley is held up by one sparkling cute little cat Leocernoa. Not a rapiculous Lelia, but she has exactly the same culture in my climate. And she is a gorgeous, gorgeous, beautiful, well, if that's not the holly of the orchids, I don't know. But yeah, she is absolutely gorgeous and doing my blooming alley proud. And cousin it is doing spectacular as well. No need for sunglasses today we can get to see his you've got beautiful eyes <laughs> if anybody is aware of that phrase what film that came from <laughs> you've got beautiful eyes <laughs> one of my favorites anyway i do appreciate that you spent some time with me i hope that you enjoyed the video and if you did or didn't let me know in the comments what i can do better i would appreciate a like if you haven't subscribed, I would really appreciate if you did subscribe. Thank you so very, very much. Thank you so much for watching. I wish you a fabulous day. On one condition, though, that you please stay safe. Take care. Bye.